Hi, today we're going to take a quick look at the three variable Carnot map. A Carnot map is basically another way, or a graphical way, if you will, of solving a Boolean expression. So instead of getting the sum of product terms from the truth table here and doing lines of Boolean algebra, uh, we're going to come up and put them in a Carnot map and that'll give us a graphical solution that, if we do it correctly, will give us the most simplified uh, Boolean expression basically in a few steps. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw the map. Now if we look at our truth table we have three variables so we have eight possible combinations so our Carnot map is going to comprise of eight cells because each one of the cells is going to store one of the outputs from the truth table. So like our truth table, our Carnot map is going to have three variables, which will be C, B, and A. Uh, by convention, I always start with the C on the left-hand side, the most significant bit. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is put the, basically the locators, uh, or what basically is going to allow us to map the information from the truth table into the Carnot map. Now, right here, is where it gets different. Because of the way adjacencies work, which we're going to talk about later on, uh, when you move from one cell to any other adjacent cell, only one bit changes. Um, if you, oh, you can almost think of it like a gray code, basically. And then the last one is going to be here. Now that we have this done, this allows us to basically map the information, if you will, from the truth table to the Carnot map. So if we see where the first line of the truth table, for example, 000, zero, zero right here, that's basically going to correspond to this box. So basically at this point we just transfer the information from the truth table to the Carnot map. So 000, zero, zero the output is a zero. If I look at 001 in the truth table, that's a 1, so I'm going to go to 001 in the Carnot map, and I'm going to 010, 011. Now 100 is down here, if we're going in the order of the truth table, and then 101, and then 110, and then 111. So basically, every output that's in the truth table should now correspond to one of the outputs in the Carnot map, based on uh, where they are. So for example, 0, 1, 1 is a 1 on the truth table, and 0, 1, 1 is a 1 in the Carnot map. So we haven't done anything magical here, we haven't done any math or any thinking, it's just basically a transfer of information from the truth table to the Carnot map. Now the next step with the Carnot map is to make groupings uh, or you'll often hear them referred to as loops as well in the Carnot map, and what we're looping are the ones. We don't include the zeros in any of our loops, but we have to make sure that all of the ones are included. Now, you can make your groups, uh, actually you have to make your groups in powers of two. So we could circle a single one, that would be legal. We can circle two ones, that would be legal. We can circle four, and in this particular map we could circle four this way or we could circle four this way. Now you could circle eight as well but we don't have eight ones in this Carnot map so we can't do that. When you're doing this you always want to pick the highest group or the, the loop that basically circles the biggest number of ones because that's going to make sure that your Boolean expression is as simplified as possible. If you don't do this correctly or do you know, groups of two where you could have done a group of four, basically it's not going to be wrong, but your expression is not going to be as simplified as it could be. If I have this group of four, as I do in the green, I have two ones left over, so I have a couple of options. I can make another group of two here, but in the Carnot map, as long as a loop has ones that are unique to that loop, you can overlap. So in this case, uh, I would want to overlap because if I leave my loops like this with a group of 4 and a group of 2, I'm going to have an expression that's not fully simplified. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a group of 4 this way. Now all my 1's are covered. My groups are in powers of 2, which is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on. Uh, and all my 1's are covered. 
I haven't put any zeros in the loop, so so far I'm good. Uh, I can't make any groups bigger than this, so I know I'm okay here. Now the only issue here is overlap, and that's okay. Because you'll notice that if you look at both the green and the red loops, or groups, each of those loops has ones that only belong to that loop, or are unique to that loop. So as long as you do that, you can overlap. You can overlap as much as you want, but if you do, and there's, there are terms that aren't unique to any one loop, again, you're going to have redundant terms, and your expression is not going to be as simplified as it can be. Now we just need to figure out how to get the expressions from those loops. So I'm going to remove the red loop for a minute and just concentrate on the green one uh, so that we don't get any confusion. What we're going to do with these loops is look at the domain of that loop, or basically how much of the real estate it takes up in that table. So if I take a look at the green loop in this direction, uh, it covers one column, if you will, and in the other direction, it covers all four rows. Now, any variables that are uh, that don't stay the same over the domain of that loop basically are redundant and are eliminated. So in this case, uh, we see the a variable here is a 1, and the a is a 1 when c and b are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 0. So the, the a and b clearly aren't a factor. Sorry, the c and b clearly aren't a factor. So they're all eliminated. So the variable for the green loop would just be A. Basically what the Carnot map does is remove redundant terms. So if you think of Boolean, uh, ar uh, Boolean arithmetic and you have something like this, for example, A or A0, that's of course just going to go down to 1. Uh, these are the kind of things that the Carnot map basically does behind the scenes when we're not looking. So it makes it a lot easier to uh, to get to those simplified uh, solutions without actually doing all that algebra. Now if I take a look at the red loop, which I'm going to put back here in a second, you do basically, you look at the same thing. You look at the domain of this loop or what it covers in the truth table, and now if I go in the up direction, it covers this much real estate, and if I go to the left, it covers this much. So here I can see that over the domain of this loop, A can be 0 or 1, uh, which means it doesn't affect it, so the A variable is going to disappear. If I look at C and B here, I can see that the B variable stays the same regardless, so the B stays, and the C variable changes from 0 to 1, so it's redundant. So this expression basically simplifies down to B. Now if I put my green loop back in, and remember that the green loop went to A, so that means now that my entire Boolean expression for this Carnot map is just A or B. Now, because this isn't a very overly complicated truth table, if you look at the truth table, you can see visually that any time A or B is 1, the output is 1. And it doesn't matter really what C is doing, because you have, you have this being 1 in all of these lines here and all of these lines here, and that happens regardless of what C is doing, so that's why it's eliminated and you get the simplified expression here, A or B. And that's a quick look at the three-variable Carnot map.